Hello, this is Andrew from Permanent Records, and I see you'd like to build a microphone with me today. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Let's get started. You're going to need to print the shock mount, the microphone body, the lid for the microphone body, the lid for the box that houses the electronics, the box that houses the electronics, and a template for cutting the diaphragm. Tools you're gonna need include a soldering iron, some solder, some wire strippers. Optionally, you might want some flux and maybe a solder sucker. You might also want a hot glue gun. You'll also need some sort of cable. Here I'm gonna use some professional grade microphone cable, but you could also just cut up an old guitar cord. We're only gonna need two conductors. Some good side cutters are optional. What is not optional is some quality coffee. Also handy to have some zap straps. If you got some calipers, that would be very nice, but it's not essential. I got the carbon at the pet store in the fish section. This is just aquarium carbon, aquarium gravel, I think we call it. Granular activated carbon, it says. I tried, this is gonna be the fourth microphone I'm making. <clears throat> because people love them and they want they want them. So the best sounding ones so far have been the ones straight out of the container. I thought maybe I'd get like less noise or smoother frequency response if I ground it up. So I tried several different grinds using my coffee grinder and uh, I enlisted my daughter to help with the mortar and pestle and she made some sort of medium grit. But just like the big chunks right out of the bag seem to sound the best and also have the most output. We're also going to need a CR2032 battery clip and a battery. Also super handy to have some 5 minute epoxy. This is actually pretty, pretty important. You should get yourself some right now. Not mandatory but handy is some rigid wire. I've got some solid core telephone wire. It's probably 22 to 24 gauge. Pretty thin but just easier to uh, tuck away into the controls once we get to that point. The best place to start is going to be with some crazy glue. I'm using no name brand. Um, and I just printed the microphone parts in PLA. One thing you might want to just double check is that your microphone threads uh, thread nicely onto a microphone stand. Alternatively, you could get a uh, an insert that goes in there. But, you know, it, uh, it works for me. I assume it'll work for you. With the nubs to hold the microphone, you want them facing back away, like towards the cavity here. So it should go on like this, and then your microphone will face out, and then the, the springs will be kind of hidden behind. And I broke, I broke it, but that's okay. If you break it like I just did, no problem. Just set it into position with a clamp. Make sure it's centered. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, surface to surface area here, so, so it should be pretty strong enough. We're going to need this part, and so next get your clear plastic and your template using a Sharpie type marker. I kind of have, uh, have a brand preference, so I've got the, uh, the Milwaukee here. So this, uh, this actually is a little loose, but that's by design. What that allows for is a large marker to go around and then you cut out your circle. So that looks pretty good to me. Just drop it in place. Make sure it sits flat on the bottom. Mine does not. But what you want is for it to drop in and, um, and not have a whole lot of movement in there. That'll give you the most blue, blue surface. I've drawn my center. This is one place having your calipers handy will be nice. 
964s for the molten medium. Now this part here is kind of challenging. What you'd like to do is get your glue around the outside, but leave, uh, leave a gap. So just like right in the corner. Um, in theory, if you've cut this real nice, it should work out. But if you get any of this glue on this, it's going to leave like a cloudy look, and I just don't think that looks as good. Now that's done, I'm going to get the body of the microphone itself and our cable. As you can see, I've put a hole in it already, um, but it's likely not the right size. So I'm just going to measure. Okay, I can force that in, it's pretty tight, but it works. The next step is to get your copper tape and cover the entire inside of of your microphone body. I keep mine in the box to keep it nice and crisp. I like it to remain smooth and look beautiful, even though nobody will ever see it but me. I'm satisfied with that. Now that we've got our microphone body ready for some wiring out, I'm going to cut off. We don't actually need much. We basically need to go from here to the box, which is probably six inches away. Well, let's give it about eight. So this, uh, this cable I'm using is microphone cable, and it's got three conductors, and we're only going to need two. This is short enough, I can just pull one out, but then the wires inside would be loose and kind of ridiculous, so... I'm gonna get two and put them together as the negative. Scratch that. I'm gonna get two and put them together as the positive, and then just leave the shield as the negative. I highly recommend some spring-loaded wire cutters. They're a little more difficult to use at first, but once you learn what it feels like when the sheath Splits, you can uh, strip wires by, by feel. And I just find that so much faster than using your typical ones with the, the notches for each gauge. Once you've got your wires ready, I like to take the zap strap and put it right around the very edge of the outer jacket. The cab tire, we used to call it back in the day. Once you got that just about as tight as you can, you can cut it with these. Or, you've got some side cutters, cuts nice and flush, no sharp edges. And when you've got this in, you can pull it, and now it can't be pulled out because you've got a zap strap for safety. Now that we have our cable inside the box and it's all nice and where we need it, I'm going to use some copper tape to attach the shield to the shield of the inside of the microphone. This is where I think it might be easy to have a uh, hot glue gun, then you can glue it in place while you tack down some solder but both sides of my copper tape is conductive, so that's how I'm going to do it online. 
Also, you've got to be real quick if you're soldering because this plastic doesn't actually hold up that well to heat. Before I glue this on, you'll notice there is this larger flat portion here. Um, there's nothing on it, but I did leave that there so you can put some branding on it if you like. You know, maybe the name of your studio, the name of your production if you're uh, using it. You know, if it's a prop, you could, you know, KBS Radio, whatever you like. But anyway, I've got my little connector here and my bolt. I'm going to crimp these two, the red and the white wires, to this, and I'm going to use the bolt to attach that wire to the diaphragm. So what happens is you speak into the microphone, the plastic vibrates, which in turn shakes the crystals inside the carbon, uh, which generates the tiniest electrical charge you've ever heard of, and then uh, runs down the cable, gets amplified by the battery, and out to your microphone preamp. I got my wires doubled over inside this crimp, and I'm just going to drop in my line spins pliers. Give it a tug, seems pretty good. As you can see, I'm just about ready to close this up. It's just missing the carbon. This is the fastest way to make your house a mess. I suggest a measuring cup or I'm just using these little cups I get at the dollar store that I use for painting. Um, maybe I should have measured how uh, the volume of that and I could give you an exact measurement but I didn't so just kind of sprinkle it in It is charcoal, so it's gonna turn everything black. Now I'm getting it level with the top, but I don't want to pack it down because these crystals need to be able to vibrate. Now you can see I've still got this part sticking up, and the most important thing is to make sure that this metal can in no way touch the shield. So in a perfect world, your cable comes out the bottom. And so you want to align this part for the label either at the bottom or the top, depending on your plans for the future. I like mine on the bottom. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of clamps and then I'm gonna mix up some two-part epoxy I find these shot glasses, clear plastic ones, are pretty awesome and a coffee stir stick for both stirring and spreading. Because this dollar store epoxy is so cheap, I always mix up more than I am need. So keep in mind a little bit of this crap goes a long way. Carefully spread it along the lip here. Now this isn't a tight enough joint to use crazy glue on, I don't think. But if you like, give it a try, and if it fails, then hey, at least it opened back up and you can do it again with something else. Hey, once you think you got enough goo, Push it down, give it a few twists just to smear the glue. And do your best to get a clamp on that in a way that doesn't wreck any of the other exciting work you've done. Now we should wait. I'm gonna give it 20 minutes. 
we are close to getting this thing done. It's time to begin soldering. I've got two pieces of rigid wire here, which I find easiest for the parts that don't move. So I'm going to connect one of these wires to pin one of the XLR output, and then I'm gonna tie pins two and three together, and those will go to the battery. So because I don't actually have the standard colors, I'm just going to use green for my pin two and three, and yellow for my pin one. This is a fantastic soldering iron. It is the Milwaukee cordless, and it makes my life easier. I'll bring up my soldering station here. I honestly feel like you can just never have enough light. <clears throat> Gonna get my helping hands to give me a helping hand. Old wire touching pin one. I'm just gonna clean up the extra wire with my side cutters and just give those a little tug to make sure they don't pop off. Excellent. Cutting off a portion of wire here, I'm going to strip just a little bit. This will give me enough wire that I can tie it in to the microphone capsule itself and then curl it away out of the way. As for this wire that's connecting pins two and three together, I'm gonna to connect that to the negative terminal on the battery. And then I'm going to connect the positive terminals to the shield of the capsule. Now that you have your battery connector connected to your XLR, it's time to mount the capsule on the stand using these machine uh, springs. <clears throat> oh, that was quite the struggle. <clears throat> okay, once you have your microphone looking like this, which is almost looking like a proper mic at this point, figure out about where you should cut your sheathing. So again, you're probably going to have to widen this out but there is a guide hole there. So let's get that done. I think I'm happy with this, the cable just kind of running straight back down and in. So I'm gonna get another zap strap and put it here as a lock, and then I'll strip the cable away. Now you should have a microphone that looks like this. If it's not exactly center, you can kind of tug it around and equalize the tension between the springs. Mine's good enough for me anyway. So instead of doing any more soldering now, what we're going to do is attach the battery and the microphone output. I'm going to use epoxy, which is pretty much my favorite thing to do. I'm gonna tuck this down Looking at the back of the microphone, tuck my uh, XLR in, and then I'm gonna put the battery down the left side in the hopes that I make sure to leave enough room for this cap to close. There we go. Perfect. I actually left this sitting overnight, and it looks like it has just glued up beautifully got two solders left to do. We've got to connect the shield from the capsule to pins two and three, and we've got to connect the diaphragm of the capsule to pin one. So I'm going to strip these wires down, twist them together, uh, get this one ready, and then make my two solders, coil up the wire nice and separate from each other so they don't touch, and uh, tuck them in. Then we'll add a battery, 
and see how it goes. Sad day, I did not push my battery clip in deep enough. So I won't be able to get the lid on properly, but the microphone is still gonna work. Specifically for the occasion. I think that looks pretty slick. Hope you enjoyed building this as much as I enjoy designing and making this video and this product. Uh, if you want to tell me about what you're using the mic for, I would actually love to hear. I'm always interested in uh, how I'm helping other people. Let's do a little close up there. That is the Permanent Records Carbon Mic 1. Have a fantastic day. This is Nibbler.